Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is January 23rd, 2022. Howard, how are you handling the bear market? I'm is, 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 is this your remedy? Cough syrup? I got a, a red jolly rat. Whew. Johnny Walker blue. And Johnny Walker, yeah. Meanwhile, Rachel's downstairs on the Peloton. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go get. It. She doesn't know how to click out of the Peloton. Oh so I may have, to go have you Peloton. told her? Have you told her that half of, of her account is in Peloton stock? The, uh, you know, we all. I wrote about. It. We owned it on the way up, and we were selling it. Like it's weird to look back at some of the sales. I was selling it at fifty and sixty on the way up, which seemed like really dumb. Mm -hmm. And then on the way down, I finally, I think, sold the last piece at sixty. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I actually sold it. I was still kind of like believing in it, but it was just so broken. Um, but anyways, 27, 28 bucks. Uh, you know, I, the, uh, I, I caught like, I was writing a lot this week. I call it the great round trip, right? They're like, we could just go through so many of these companies that have round tripped, uh, Peloton being one of the, the, the weakest ones. Let me just go grab my pup. Hang on one second. Lindsay, come here. Hang on. All right, I'm here. Oh, it's probably one of those, one of those kids. I'm drinking, I got the dog here. So what about Lindsay? Lindsay doesn't know that we may have to sell her for cash. Just to pay yeah. to Carvana, right? <laughs> it's a Carvana thing. Yeah. I'd be shocked if it doesn't go to zero. Pull that up. Like, the. It's the only trade. It's my only trades that's worked this year is selling my used car. So uh, <laughs> pull up the. Uh, well, it's down 64% already. Looking at this. Pull up Chewy because Lindsay is here today. Hang on. Let's just... All right. Let's take a look on Chewy. 68. Wow. So many stocks down between. Oh, my goodness. To 70%. Uh, it's unbelievable. It, and it, it's not just packs. It's, okay. So it's, it's back below its IPO price on here. No, not really, but close so, to it. Yeah, I was looking at, excuse me, figs, which I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the IPO list just to find great companies. And, but that went straight up after the IPO. This is like a Shopify store that does um, medical gear. It's kind of like Lululemon for nurses and doctors. And what is that now? 20. Down, um, down 58%. Wow, crazy. Yeah. I mean, Shopify. These are itself. short periods of times too. Yeah, it's down 50, exactly 50% 50 from an all-time high just two months ago. So in Shopify Yeah, was it went half. from like a, a almost breaking out on relative strength to now a relative strength on 17. So this is going to be kind of crazy. I mean, great, the great round trip, the only stocks that it hasn't affected are... So a couple of weeks ago, Ivan and I said X is over Qs. And it seems like that's, you know, they're going to play catch up to the downside if this continues. But like if the XLF... And the XLE are kind of not giving back much. Where's XLF? Oil is the only one that it, that is falling. Everything else was kind of hit last week. Uh, financials, um, not really. Considering how weak the tape is, the financials still look good. Uh, I wouldn't touch them, but like you know, compared to tech, yes, everything is looking great. That means look great. They, they are starting to crack. They're starting to crack. They're starting to crack. Um, but that's still, if you're going to see a bounce in tech, it's going to start. Obviously, if we continue to see that rotation from growth to value, maybe financials and, and commodities are going to hold a little bit better than mm -hmm. the rest. But who knows? I mean, look at even Coinbase, you know, came public at 400. Well, uh, with, with it's all a levered crypto, crypto trade, right? So it's a levered crypto trade. So, yeah. so on the way down, it's going to be worse than crypto. Um, but here you go. Where, where's the valuation here? This is on my list at some point. Because oh, 40 billion. Yeah. So in the 20 billions, they probably have 10 billion in cash. Like we are getting, listen, as silly as everybody thought growth was, the, the correction is so quick and these companies are growing so fast. So pull up Netflix, for example. Wall Street, this is what's broken about our markets is a top 10 market cap stock, you know, on news that really wasn't shocking you know what their their forward numbers aren't great um for that stock to go from 700 to 400 
well, six, five something to 400, you know, it just goes to show you how little liquidity there really is in the system. That stock shouldn't, at what valuation is that? 400 to- 176. Yeah, so a stock like that shouldn't move 40 billion in a day. And so all this, you know, so you gotta be really careful right now, obviously. Um, you this can been, happen to Netflix. Imagine what can happen to Dogecoin or <laughs> stuff like this. Well, I don't know about Dogecoin because if you're in Dogecoin right now, I, I, I think you uh, you can't be helped at this point. I mean, God bless, but Netflix is three times the size as it was in 2018. Um, so you know. Again, they're not cheap. These stocks are never going to be cheap in, a, in, a, in an economy that's printed so much money. And, in a, in a, you know, and people will pay up for growth. But man, you know, to give up three, four years of gains and the company is just so much bigger. Um, and with that focused a business model and subscriptions, you know, I'm going to buy this dip this week. You know, this is, a, this is one of my eight to eighties that I'm going to add to. Uh, I'd like to see some strength there for it to stop going down. But again, you can't, you, th these are, these things are crazily overdone. Pull back up Shopify, Evan. I'm just going to go through some of my favorite names. Listen, I, I, I own some, uh, you know, I mean, I literally got to be pre or prepared for the 600s, which puts you back to March, 2020 prices uh, before the pandemic. And you can't tell me, that Shopify is not a better business than going into the pandemic. So overvalued or not, growing slower now than, than before or not, this business is more dominant than ever, but people are looking for liquidity right now. Um, and this is the first sign of panic since March, 2020. What I don't think is the same, Ivan, mean, you can tell me here, is the price now has changed sentiment. It's kind of something that's like a famous thing. And now, um, you know, with interest rates, you know, starting to be priced in or an inflation in the system and still, you know, a little bit of chaos in the, in the, um, in the supply chain. Um, it's a, t it's a tough market. You've been kind of conservative. So what, what do you say? Yeah, I've been conservative. Last week, I told you that I think this is a, you know, marketing correction. This is exactly what we're seeing. Last week, the market was only open four days and, and all, every single one of them, the S&P, all the major indices close near the lows. You know, they would just try a brief intraday rally for 45 minutes and they would just be, you know, slammed down. So a lot of distribution though. Relentless was, selling, that's back, what I'm if seeing. If you look back yeah. to the beginning of January, there was a lot of distribution preceding this. So... so yeah. So major selling all around, more and more sectors getting hit. Oil is the only one left and probably the, it's going to crack. So look, there is a 10% chance, I think, that this is the beginning of a bear market. And by yeah. bear market, I'm saying, you know, lower prices in the next year or two. Obviously, some of the most fierce rallies happen within the context of bear markets. And then you can see some, you know, big 20%, 25% rallies along the way. But Mm -hmm. There is a 10% chance that this could be just the beginning of something bigger, considering how tech has done in the past 10 years. Yeah. But shorter term, next week, I think there is a FOMC meeting uh, Wednesday. And typically, we, in the past, the past few times, uh, we would see the stock market kind of sell off ahead of the meeting, being afraid if the Fed is going to do anything. Usually, the Fed is just mostly talking and doing very little so in in the past few times we saw a rally uh, right after the fomc meeting so maybe we'll see something like this this time again at least short term overall i, I would say people need to remain cautious i think we're still in a correction market environment which means that you need to be very nimble and if you if you're going to be trading it has to be shorter term unless you have yeah. like a really really long term horizon like buffett uh then it doesn't matter yeah. Even a lot of the guys who I follow that have, that have been short the S&P are going to start covering Monday and Tuesday if they, if, because it's a, such a big win for them. And then, you know, they know that uh, this has been a relentless sell-off 
Um, and like I said, some of these, like even, even Robinhood and Coinbase, they'll start trading at cash value pretty soon. Let's see. So, um, I mean, the S&P is down less than 9%. Right. But the S&P is Apple, right? Warren, Buff, Warren, Warren Buffett owns 50% 50, 50 of the stock. So Apple's reporting this week. You could get, if Apple, if Apple just says something half wrong, you're going to see the stock in the 130s, 140s, and you know, people will step in there. So we're closer Again, barring this isn't something we don't foresee, but the economy is not horrible. Um, the country's half open. Um, I'm seeing some incredible innovation around APIs. And, you know, Mark Cuban launched uh, a, a low price pharmacy today, and I was looking at this site, TruePill, that uh, I've had him on my show. Um, the VC, uh, I'm having a senior moment, but the company called TruePill that powers all this, and I, I'm not gonna share my screen, but there is so much innovation around e-commerce and, and consumer products and bringing down costs where it matters, education and healthcare. So there's so much to come out of, which will create more chaos, don't get me wrong, but there is so much um, uh, consumer savings coming. Uh, despite the despite the concerns around healthcare, because you know because of technology, so at some point this stick, this sticks in. And the cloud stocks right now are hated. If we go through the if we rip through them, Cloudflare, some of these some of these cloud stocks. Yeah, this is the ETF. Uh, oh, I didn't know. Cloud. Do you know what's in that? I, I've been looking for everything. A cloud ETF. So it's basically down thirty six percent on average. The cloud stocks are down thirty six. So again, so if you see this in the low thirties. You, this is this isn't like buying Exxon in 2020, right? This is buying. Some of these companies are fast growing like crazy. So if you see Cloudflare in the 60s and 70s, um, think about what you were doing in 2020 in March during that panic, and know that these companies have grown so fast. So again, I would start watching this ticker at WCLD, but like in the 30s. Um, you know, you have to own some for the next 10 years. Now, the components of that, I said, are Cloudflare, um, Datadog, DDOG, a super fast growing company. Uh, but again, you know, you know, if, that, if that's in the 80s again, which could be this week, you know, these are companies that the institutions are going to be gobbling up. Snowflake, uh, never going to be cheap, but below it i think getting down below its ipo price so these are the ones that i'm watching um you know back around 200 uh, could be there tomorrow uh asana kind of gave back asna i think it's another great enterprise cloud company um great ip but again we're right back into its base here in the 40s you know here's a chance uh to get some of these growth stocks down 70 percent um so that's what interests me you know the x's over the f's uh, i get x's over the q's i get but i'm always going to be a qqq over spy guy so when you get a chance to buy some of these q companies down 70 percent i mean uh, you, you, you i agree with you that. when they're down so much when the market is so oversold you know you can gobble some the question is no i think even when, long term the economy when are you going to sell <laughs> Is it a trade? Is it an investment? That's the you know, I personally question. think it's hard to trade them, but I think you can start entering positions here. And, you know, I own a lot of these. Um, so I'll be looking at to Shopify and Cloudflare and Datadog. Um, Asana is something I'm doing work on. I'm trying to think what else I'm looking at. The trade desk, TTD, it's kind of dominating the ad space. Um, but again, you know, this no rush here, but in the 30s, if this thing, if we're in a crash mode. So again, I don't think it's, I think it's a valuation-based correction based on interest rates and the government and, and um, some liquidity, short-term liquidity. It feels like people are blowing up. ARKK, um, you know, if Tesla goes, this will be in the 50s. And unless you really think she doesn't know what she's doing, um you know the you basically have given back you know all the 220 games so tesla's really been the differentiator if you if you were if you were making money the last few years tesla was in your portfolio or you were in the energy trade and uh pretty amazing what other drops have you seen that are kind of like amazing 
I mean, biotech is a pretty starking example mm -hmm. that is down to, I don't know what, 2018 levels. So uh, <sighs> even, even more, let me, let's take a look at monthly. So basically down to 2015 levels. So even the, after the pandemic, se and all seven of years of nothing. Uh, and this is this is the XBI. This is the index. Like imagine what is this the, the equal weighted one, Ivan? Is this the equal weighted? I'm not sure, I'd, but definitely it represents a lot more uh, stocks, smaller cap than the IBB. So it's a better representation of the sector. So mm -hmm. seven seven years of nothing, and if this is the index, imagine what's under the the surface, like yeah. the smaller stock. What's going on there? Yeah. Uh, so definitely yeah. major damage, and obviously this is all related to rising inflation expectations, you know, expectations for rising interest rates are just repricing of assets in general. Yeah, um, you mean, listen, I, again, the market is really hard because it's so politicized, I, I, you know, which is why, you know, indexing is working too, is just get everybody to just play the game. They may not have to raise rates. You know, you have three more weeks of this. I don't know, this kind of self-corrected without rising rates. You know, basically it's as if, you can keep rates at zero if asset price, if, if the Nasdaq drops another 10, 15 percent and wipes out a couple of years of gains, uh, why raise rates? Well, it depends you know, if, you see, if they care about the stock market right now or, or if they care about they, Of course they care about inflation. the stock market. That's the only way to get elected. I mean, corporations run the country. So, you know, you see 15 percent more on the Nasdaq, people will be saying, why do you need to raise rates? Anyway, I wouldn't invest based on that. I'm just saying you know, the market's kind of taking care of the rate rise before the rate rises here, you know. Well, that's usually the case. If the market yeah. is forward looking, the question is, is it going to be, you know, longer term than what, what people believe? Because as of right now, there are a lot of people that are not only in the crypto space, but also in the cloud space. that are long term believers in the technology and maybe they wind up right, but maybe you're too early. <laughs> Maybe well, there's, there's more damage. Listen, they're too confident too early. And the vault, if you look at Bitcoin, one of the beautiful things about crypto. Okay, um, let, let me pull up uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. One of the beautiful things about crypto is there's no, there's no way to close the market. So it just wipes everybody out. Like the Saturday morning massacre. I don't know. I'm, I read that hundreds of thousands of accounts were wiped out in Bitcoin futures. So, so it doesn't have like the Fed intervening. Um, one second. It's amazing that uh, Marcus Smith doesn't have crypto yet. Yeah, it's surprising, but uh, it, that's what's going on. So, yeah. Come and Rach, hang on. Rachel is locked into her pedals uh, on her Peloton. All right. This is that should video. be a video on its own. So, here we go. So, there were hundreds of thousands of people wiped out on this move, and we're basically just back to 2021. Yeah, prices. fifty percent drop, which is not. So can this can can this audience can these new investors who don't understand leverage survive a move to twenty thousand? No. So so you could see cascading prices in this sector. What people don't understand is there is so much money newly allocated to this sector in funds that um, I just don't see a catastrophic. There's too many smart people. And there's too much money here to buy the dip. Again, macro, I, don't, I, I can't, I have no fortune. Uh, I'm not a fortune teller about like what could go wrong, but I think I'm like you, 10 to 20% risk of a bear market, which would really just come from sentiment. I don't think it's economic. I think it would just come from the sentiment of, of people being, you know, nervous and tired. Yeah, currently the sentiment is, is, is becoming very pessimistic, like especially yeah. considering the so far the market reaction to earnings. I mean, TSM had like a record quarter, which is the biggest semiconductor producer in the world. And I mean, they gapped up and then they gave it up. Netflix had a decent report. You saw the, you saw the reaction down 20%. Yeah. I mean, Zoom, listen, I haven't told my Zoom because it's five times bigger than it was two years ago, despite everybody saying with the end of pandemic, they're growing faster than ever. So again, great companies um, are always gonna be overvalued, right? They don't have to ship um, cycles to anybody. They've got Google and they've got Microsoft up their yin yang. But again, this company is five times bigger than it was when it broke out uh, in March of 2020. So eventually people will say, wait a minute, 
conference, video conferencing is not going away. We may do it less, but you're going to pay the same amount of subscription. The products are going to get better and better. And, you know, we'll be outside and we'll be networking, but you and I will still be doing this show on Zoom for 10 years and doing our communication like this because it's perfect. The fact that you and I can sit down and do this and share it is not going away. And there's no better format to do this. Why should we get in a studio and do a high produced show? So again, people have to keep their heads. Um, you know, there is a bear market, I, you know, not in the full market, but there has been a, one of the worst bear markets that I've ever seen in growth. Okay, and there's a reason for that because of interest rates, inflation, overvaluation, um, and hot money. But at some point, uh, these great companies uh, will find footing. The key for people is to, you know, keep some powder to buy these things and then give yourself a time frame for these companies to, to uh, correct themselves. But you've, you've nailed it to you. You're kind of just on the sidelines or short. You were probably short a few minutes. So I mostly do intraday. So yeah, I may do both short and long, but intraday, like I don't want to hold overnight anything right now. And um, to your point, Yes, at some point, those growth names will re represent great buying opportunities, but we don't know when. And markets tend to overshoot, and just like yeah. they over overshot to the upside in the past couple of years uh, when the NASDAQ 100 went up 50, 60%. Absolutely. We may never see a market uh, like we've seen. They can overshoot to the downside. And yeah. you might think that, oh, Zoom used to trade at 300 P like a couple of years ago. That's super high. Now it's down to 30. That's, that's reasonable. But right. if the market overshot, I mean, that P can drop to 10 because during bear markets Absolutely. and during periods of pessimism, we see a multiple contraction. So that's the, that's the risk right now. That yeah. those, For me, though, in 8 to 80 brands, I'm going to be using Zoom 20 years from now. I, you know, I can't see myself using Microsoft. Well, you, well, you, you don't really know. I mean, there might be a new technology. I mean, Facebook may come up with you know, something where in the metaverse. But it won't be, be Facebook, but I... Uh, Oh, Rachel has figured out how, instead of clicking out of her shoes, she just got out of the shoes and left the shoes attached to the... <laughs> so there is a way, Rachel, Escape from Peloton should have been a video. The, uh, I'm trying to think what other stuff I'm looking at, Ivan. Um, I'm trying to think what else is interesting out there. But yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm definitely caught off by surprise at how relentless the selling's been. Uh, but it's also more like I'm making the calls to hedge funds. I just don't want to buy. There's kind of like a buying strike. It's kind of like there's no Look bid. at last week. Every single day, like finishing near the close. Like yeah. there, I haven't seen so much relentless selling in a while. I mean, just yeah. every single day. Yeah, and this can build on itself. So don't, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be the only guy here. But I've kept high cash positions for moments like this. And I don't really care about Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan and all these fake companies. I want pure growth. I'm always going to overpay, but I'd rather overpay when they're down 70% than when they're at all time highs. So it is, a, it's, it's, it's really a tough spot and you really have to know your position. That's why I stick to my eight to 80 portfolio, but uh, oh wow, this IGV. So it was holding. So now the, the software index is down how much? Give me the, uh, let's see the weekly. Uh, so 20, 24, so it's not that bad. I'm just making some notes, hang on, WCLD. So yeah, if this, if this gets down around the 300 area, you're basically back to March 2020 prices uh, with all these new companies onboarded and growing still. So again, yeah. you've got to have some levels and you've got to have a plan, but, uh, and you know, we may just, you you know you have to you have to kind of pick some um, some lines in the sand where you want to put some money to work. But uh, Look, and a, lot of, a lot of those mega caps they still have a lot of cash. Uh, they're still acquiring. So a couple of right. Microsoft bought Activision. Things. So it's like I said, things. Microsoft bought Activision. You have all these crypto funds layered to the hilt with cash that are going to step in and just buy the layer one blockchains because they got to put the money to work. So you could just see a shit pile of acquisitions, especially in fintech now that squares down to 40 billion or 50 billion. Uh, it could get bought by JP Morgan. I mean, it's not going to because uh, Jack won't sell. But thank God Jack is just wrecking one company at a time right now. Hey man, like, oh my wow. God. 
What are you trying to make me feel bad about myself? No, no, because you mentioned potential acquisition. So I'm thinking like, what's they better won't way? Sell. What's Square better wouldn't way sell to... and they won't sell. Okay. But what I'm saying is at some point, okay, people will go, wait a minute. PayPal. Wow. Yeah. Now that's a really big company at 100, at 200 billion. That's not a small company. So it's my, even though it's my favorite one of the, of the fintechs, it ain't cheap, right? But um, there are a lot of five to $10 billion fintech companies that'll get bought. So, so, and then I was looking at some of the IPOs I've been like DLO, uh, which is uh, Latin American Stripe. And again, this is not, I mean, this is not cheap, but this is a great infrastructure, uh, um, fintech company, Adyen. Uh, that, yeah, wow, is that the IPO index? Yeah, it is. So down forty-two percent. So I thought the ticker was IPO, not IPOS. IPO is less liquid. So both. Okay, so give, give me the IPOS. Sorry, I, I've been following the wrong one. So yes. IPOS is more liquid. Yeah, I think it's more liquid. Uh, let's see. So this one has five sixty market cap, and this the other one has uh, one second. IPOS. Okay, the, the other one seems to be bigger, so I don't know. Okay, so this one's down about 50%. Wow, what a so, game back. IPO is the more liquid. Yeah, IPO yeah. is more liquid. Yeah, more liquid. But they're down the same, 42%, so. Right, but to go buy some of these guys, and again, I'm not saying you should. So I'm looking at like NerdWall. So M-E-R-D maybe? Again, small company, know the founders. Right, this is traded down yeah, to about, something what's, else. What's the valuation? No, NRDS maybe? Okay, yeah, well, exactly. NRDS. Yeah. I was looking at this, and you know, granted, maybe it's not, shouldn't be a public company, yada, yada, yada. But uh, what's the market cap? Four, five hundred million. This is like a billion dollar acquisition for somebody. So I'm saying, I don't have the stomach to play small caps, but these are good businesses. Uh, maybe they shouldn't have been public, but there is going to be a gigantic amount of acquisitions in the five to $10 billion range if this persists because we're not in a bear market. So, so for people that want to do work, this is what I was saying about the private market. I've been bitching about the private markets, all these people paying $50 million seed. You know, I'm on both sides and I'm like, wait a minute, you're going to tell me, and I'm not saying I'm going to go trade IPOs. Um, but I am tempted to put a lot of money into a basket of these saying, these are good businesses. Maybe they shouldn't have gone public, but they're worth a lot more than what a scared, you know, there's just so much supply out there and there's not enough analysts. There's not enough people doing the work. And so you have all this massive supply of new companies with no coverage and they're just getting sold, you know, by shareholders who have never been in the public market. And because they were a seed investor or they've been running these companies for 10 years. So amongst the IPO wreckage are some great companies that, that can be bought by the, the, the public fintech companies and by the public e-commerce companies. So again, if, if you believe I'm in your pretty conservative 10% chance of a bear market, everything that I read uh, is that um, everybody's just, it's a buyer strike more than, more than selling. And there's just people just don't want growth. But I, I'm watching IPOs. I'm watching the WCLD and I'm watching IGV. Those are the sectors that I'm watching. And the, the, the further down they go, the better from a long-term perspective because these companies are growing 30 to 50% a year. All right, buddy. Have a great week. All right. You too, Howard. <clears throat> Lindsay, say goodbye. Do you want to have a drink? I'm just going to give Lindsay.